Welcome, Welcome to, to Big, Big Natural, Natural Talents. Talents. Well, look at us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Should we address the elephant Should. in the room or the elephant that we're in? in- I believe the elephant is the room. Yeah. <laughs> and it's grey and it's beautiful and it's called a studio. It's called a studio. You guys might not have heard of that before. Imagine we were, like, we're actually held hostage in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does feel like that, like sitting in front of this camera. There's like a, just a grey wall behind it. I feel like I'm like... If my mum is watching this, <laughs> please tell her that I love you. And and no, we're, we're here it's, on our own free will. Yeah, it's just really funny if you're like, we've got some big news. We've moved up in the world and we're held hostage. <laughs> it's like actually really tragic. Um, yes, but if you are the 99.9% of the audience that is listening to this and not watching it on a video, yep. we are in a studio and that's maybe why we sound a little bit better and we're a also bit recording prettier. a video. We yeah. sound prettier. We sound a bit more beautiful. <laughs> it sounds longer and our and eyes sound sparklier. It's money is what <laughs> it is. That's all it is. You look at Kylie Jenner before and after she got mm. all the money and it's a different girl. It's a different girl. She's better now. So, Anyways, let's move on. We're here. Yeah. Get over it. <laughs> Big week. <laughs> Big week. Um, okay, Lauren, I have to sort of talk about something that popped into my head. And yeah. I, <laughs> That's kind of everything sure? that happens on this podcast, <laughs> something that popped into your head. Okay, so you know that, um, and everyone who knows me knows that I wear a bum bag. Everyone who knows you knows. Yeah. yeah. Famously, I wear a bum bag religiously. <laughs> and Which, again, famously, you don't do anything because you're not famous. And actually, yeah. people don't know you. But, and like, sort of, anyway. you can have fame on a small scale. Like, yeah. if I lived in a small country town and everyone, everyone knew would that I had... Um, Syphilis. <laughs> and then everyone knew in the town. I could obviously say, well, famously, you all know that famously. I have hemorrhoids. Like, it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, I'm famous in the town for having hemorrhoids. It would make sense that you would be famous in a town for having hemorrhoids. But yes, <laughs> you, <laughs> you're, you're kind of a pioneer of the bum bag and you use it in interesting ways. But you do wear a bum bag a lot. I wear a bum bag and I have realized I've worn a bum bag maybe like every day for the past three years. Is it like, do you have like a fungal infection on your lower stomach or something? Bro? I have like a bed sore <laughs> along Yuck. my I don't, I don't. And I actually have had two in the past, but the you idea. You rotate them out, you keep it fresh, you, <laughs> keep it fresh. you change the dressings Designers every day. design bum bags for me and I'm wearing them. And <laughs> you clean underneath it every day. Anyway. And the reason I have a bum bag is because no one's talking about this. Have Having a handbag is like so annoying. It's oppressive. Having a handbag is like oppressive. It's like on one shoulder, so mm-hmm. I'm like, Ugh. and also like, um, I'll forget it. I always put it down, and then I never pick it up again. <laughs> I'm famously forgetful. Anything <laughs> <laughs> strapped to your literal body. Yeah, and yeah. I noticed that I stopped losing things by having it yeah. strapped to my body and just keeping the essentials. Yeah. Um, and then a backpack. Don't even get me started on a backpack. I mean. If you have small things that you need yeah. and you have to keep them in it's the in backpack, backpack when you're reaching you have to go over like this there. all the time. It's oh, insane, actually. Let me and if get you, my opal. Yeah, if you're wearing a backpack, I feel like I'm a child who's run away from home or something. Yeah. You've like, got a rucksack. Oh, I've got my backpack. You know, yeah. got a runny nose. It's just like the worst. I like. Okay. I love the idea of it, but it's the worst. So, anyway, what happened with the bum what bag? Ha- what's happening with the bum bag is I think I'm actually outgrowing the bum bag. <laughs> something okay. needs to happen. Something needs to change. Need I'm finding new. it like I want to carry this giant water bottle. It's too big. Mm, but it's the recommended amount of water that a girl like me <laughs> should be having. But what if every you day re- you don't? You could fill something up. Mm. Won't fit in the bum bag, will it? So, so, so anyway. Maybe it's a camelback. <laughs> yeah, I need to carry a camelback attached to my back. Yeah. Anyways, but do you know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm outgrowing. I'm like getting tired of it, but I don't know where to go from yeah. that because you can't go back to, uh, we've just talked smack about backpacks and about handbags and well, I don't know what to do. Yeah, and you're asking me for advice. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah. well... <laughs> I would say, like, what I can see for you, but it's not going to accommodate, you know, a two-litre bottle of water, mm. is just, like, get, like a, like, a nice, like, a leather bum bag that's, like, a designer bum bag. Like, mm. those glamorous kind of streamlined ones. Why don't you just get one of those? What's the difference between mine and that? Because it will look better. Wait, hang on a minute. 
I didn't come to you asking for aesthetic help. You just want a practical. I want practical. Well, if you want to carry something I didn't come here and say, Lauren, means. I think my bum bag's really ugly. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said, Lauren, I don't think the bum bag's working anymore. Where do you go from the bum bag? I've we been to, to the moon. fighting on the podcast. Well, I'm like offended. <laughs> <laughs> You've just sort of indirectly you said, said my bum bag's ugly. You don't want a ugly. backpack. You don't want a handbag. It's got to be strapped to your body, but you yeah. also want it to accommodate a two liter bottle of yeah. water. So you're saying I should get like one of those ones that lads wear, which is like the Louis Louis Vuitton, big square. Yeah, I guess like yeah. a crossbody bag. A crossbody bag. Yeah, like, I almost wore a crossbody bag yeah. today. It's still not gonna accommodate that large round bottle of water. You could maybe get like a flat bottle of water mm. and just say to yourself that you will drink <laughs> water that is not just from this one bottle. <laughs> this is just the same. The way I solve problems is just like if everyone knows a story that I buy so many tubs of ice cream all the time i'm always buying tubs of ice cream when i'm happy when i'm sad <laughs> <laughs> when it's a good day and when it's a bad day when i'm bored i'm buying a tub of ice cream off uber eats and anyone else i was like i need to stop doing this mm. and anyone else would be like well that just takes self-control and willpower can chat and i was like well i don't have that so That's what i need to do <laughs> what i need to do is i need to physically lock myself out of my account i need to lock myself out of my so i asked my friend my dearest friend yeah. lauren and i said lauren can i use your email so it like i just i can't remember why i thought that but i just thought if i have your email as the login then i can't log yeah. in so my email is Kinchetta's login for yeah. the uber eats account and now I just get notified whenever she buys ice cream, which yeah, is a so lot. Yeah, so it didn't work. It means I can still buy ice cream, but she just gets an email now every time I know I'm buying about it. it. So there's kind of another level of shame, which is coming yeah. from me. Because and so then I get a text <laughs> at 10 in the morning when, yes, I had ordered a tub of ice cream <laughs> because it was a bad day. <laughs> or maybe it was a good day. I don't even remember. And she was like, sent me a screenshot and was like, are you okay? <laughs> well, that's real. Are you okay? And I plot was... twist, I wasn't. Okay, was I? Imagine if you start at ice cream at 10, like, what were you doing by nightfall? Because <laughs> I'm always starting good. You know, I'm starting, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to have coffee and I'm actually never going to eat again. So, <laughs> and then come to a clock, guess who wants to eat? <laughs> Me. Every day. I don't know why. Every morning I think, I don't think I need to eat anymore. <laughs> I, I think, think I'm, I'm done with eating. I think I'm past food and I'm going to be one of those people that's like, I forgot to have lunch. <laughs> No, I'm consumed by the idea of lunch. But then someone, you said to me, you're like, Kajana, even if we'd done that, you can just order any other app and yeah, just start ordering. There's like there's a hundred apps there's that you can order ice cream on. <laughs> so that's what I mean by these problems. I They're unsolvable. Every problem mm. in my life is physically... It's impossible. It's impossible. It's mission impossible. <laughs> So great. Thank you for not solving that problem. Well, what? it's crazy. That's just my personal gossip. That's your personal gossip. That was like not really gossip as well, which is kind of like mm, I think you gossip. want a new handbag <laughs> is what that was. And that's gossip. And it's amazing that I let you sit there and deliver that monologue while I am sitting on kind of the gossip experience of a lifetime myself. Oh, here we go. Come on. I know you know about this as well. And I do. This was something as well, like. I'm going to talk about this carefully and respectfully mm -hmm. because I don't want to get in trouble and I don't want to... There's wanna... snipers in this room. There's snipers. There's a gun at my head <laughs> and it's being held. Gun to your head, record a podcast. Yeah, gun to your head. Okay, carefully talk about this thing that happened. The person holding the gun is the entertainment industry. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because what happened is I did a gig on the weekend mm -hmm. and I did not know what was gonna like you no one tells you anything you they're just like get an email and it's like can you come do this gig and you're mm -hmm. like you say yes because yeah. that's kind of how i live mm -hmm. and i turn up and there is apparently a very special secret guest on the lineup and the very special secret guest is none other than mr sasha baron cohen aka ali g aka, AKA Bora, aka Bruno, aka the Brothers Grimsby, aka the Dictator, aka husband of Isla, Isla Fisher. Fisher, the most important, aka. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly, you'll know him from his marriage to Al Isla Fisher. Our Isla Fisher, Australia's own. Yeah. So how could that? It was just. So wait, sorry. Yeah. Were you alerted to the secret guest via email? No, not at all. Via a, a secret. I was alerted to the secret guest like through the grapevine through gossip channels through some i ran into 
um, someone who was on the lineup the day before, and they and I was like, oh, I'm on tomorrow night, and they were like, oh, there's a secret guest. Oh. Were you put on especially for the secret guest? No, I just think someone else was not available. Dropped out, which yeah, I'm yeah, kind yeah. of like sucked in. Sucked in. You've blew you it. Dropped out of this for for something else. Well, and... it was huge, and I anyway. was like stranded over in Jugyeong. Um, <laughs> and Chichetto's in the country, and I was like, what are you? doing i'm actually we thought those asher brand con would be there so then yeah. we went there and then to find out he was at the store and we got yeah. it all wrong it was so c- sad crazy stuff but so what's the gossip like what was it like like i don't even what, know what was it crazy well it's crazy night? like i don't know i'd never done a gig with a, like, a very very famous person before like when you're in australian comedy there isn't really anyone that famous or no. if it is it's mr dave hughes i mean what's your yeah he's just like tongue? the rest of us dave hughes is huge yeah i know but he's you know he's in the green room he's yeah. he's eating the chips he's slumming and stuff it he's hanging out he was telling me about his day like he's he's chill but when you got like hollywood kind of famous like there's a whole other thing like we actually weren't even like allowed to like to be in the same room as him and actually it was just like why do you think that i was and like i moved through several kind of stages going through this so Mm. because it's like well i'm so excited that i'm gonna get to meet this famous person and then it's like oh we actually can't meet him because he like just gets to do his own thing Mm -hmm. and at first i was like oh that sucks like which it does kind of suck and then you're like, oh, why is he doing that? But then actually when you think about it, if you were that famous and you're like somewhere mm-hmm. and you don't know anyone, mm-hmm. you don't know these freaks who are on the comedy lineup. Yeah. Comedians are freaks and they're they the worst freaks. people in the world. Mm-hmm. And if someone asked me, hey, would you want to be in a private room instead of talking to these random comedians that you've never met in a random city that you've never been to? Oh, my God. I'd be like, even now, Lauren, before even Hollywood now, fame, would be like, I'll take the silent room. Please, I would be like, With please. no one. And they're like, Conchetta's in there. No, she wants to be in her own no. room. No, I'd be like, clear the room. <laughs> <laughs> Can we clear the room? Okay, because I actually don't want any contact with these freaks. And it does make sense. And also, like, what he do you think he know. would talk to you guys about? He was probably like, you know, just getting ready for the show, doing his thing. Like, Do you think Isla was there in, no, in the room? No, I don't think she was. If she was, I would freak out because... <laughs> You're like, I'm a redhead as well. Yeah, I don't know if she should have. But then, you know, the worst part of this was like me telling people, I was like, oh my God, I did this gig. And then I was like, oh, we didn't get to meet him though because like, you know, it was mm. kind of just kept separate and didn't want to make a fuss, you know. Um, but then I hear from like everyone else in the world. You know, I what? told my friend Gabby and she was like, oh yeah, my nail lady went to their house to do Isla's nails. <laughs> she said she's really nice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and then my friend. Oh, yeah, my friend's kids go to the same school <laughs> yeah. as their kids. And I Isla, teach at that school. Yeah. Yeah. And Natalie Portman's kids go there. Oh, my God. So guess what I'm going to do when I teach that next? I'm going to ask the kids, who are these kids? Where are they? Yeah, where are they? And Bring what's them the story? <laughs> <laughs> and what's the story with them? Like, are you treating them like normal kids? Do you know who they are? Do they know who they are? I'm going to, like, talk to the Tell kids and everything. get to know. And you are, in turn, mm-hmm. going to not treat them like normal kids. <laughs> No. You're going to treat them better. I'm going to be like, hey, what's this screenplay that just fell out of my bum bag? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just doing this character. <laughs> and oh, it'd be so funny Tell mommy and daddy. you told your daddy about this <laughs> crazy character that I'm doing. Um, um, also, my yeah. boyfriend, famous <laughs> Benjamin Caution. <laughs> yes. Um, he saw him at a cafe Whoa. earlier that day. What did he, he say? Was anything so close, to him? no. And he said, and I said, was everyone freaking out seeing him? And he was like, no. no, he just looked like a schleppy dad. Well, I feel like you wouldn't. I wouldn't recognize anyone mm-hmm. if I saw mm-hmm. them. Which actually, I was literally just on my way driving here. I always see strangers, and I'm like, is that a, is that this celebrity? But it's not. I saw this man <laughs> who was like this old <laughs> white man with dreadlocks, and he like looked pretty rough. Yeah, he was an old white guy with blonde dreadlocks, and he, except he had like black flame frame glasses on mm-hmm. and a blazer. And, and you're was, like, that's Martin Scorsese. <laughs> yeah. No, I was actually, I was like, is that Tim Bailey, the weatherman? <laughs> Do you, have you ever seen a stranger and thought they were a celeb? All the time. Yeah. And if I'm looking at a person who looks like a celebrity, they generally do look like that celebrity. And I've always thought about starting an Instagram where I would take photos with people who look slightly like celebrities. That would be funny. Wouldn't that be so that funny? That would be so funny. But someone else was like, that's not... Why would you do that? Don't tell they other people. They shout on my dreams. People will tear you down. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me and I will tear you down, but in a in constructive a, way. In a good way. Yeah. And I but think it's so funny. I feel like when you're in the presence of a real celeb, especially like SBC, Mr. Sasha Baron, because mm. um, he's like so tall, like he'd be such a presence, which he is. Like I like walked past him basically what? is the contact I had, which because I didn't know he was going to be there. He was like around the corner and then I like got scared. 
because he was like in the vicinity and then i was like oh i didn't i didn't shout um but he's so tall and he was like oh wearing god. a costume and oh i was my like god. he just seems so sexy i'm just oh like god. thank you for your service thank you sorry oh, yeah. i'm not mad at all that he like wanted space no did you get to watch him while he yeah. performed That's it was so crazy awesome. They like announced him and the audience went crazy. Then he came out and the people like realized like it was really him and they were like, because <gasps> usually they're like used to Rodney Todd like doing <laughs> Ahmed Zoom. I love Who's Rodney right? Todd. I love Rodney Todd, but like you're like, oh, is this Rodney Todd? And oh, is this like, Rodney Todd doing a character of his? No, 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 it's the real deal. It's literally the, that's what I mean. And guess who also is the real deal? It's Rodney Todd. So. Hey, no shade to Ronnie no Todd. Shade. I actually brought him up to promote him. I and to <laughs> can't believe you drag his name through the mud. Anyway, but that's my gossip. And I hope I talked about it in a respectful way that will not end my career or um, no. burn any bridges. I think you're good. Um, and Isla, if you're listening, um, reach out, babe. There were actually paparazzi outside, no. apparently, after no. the first show. Um, and I was like, okay, my dream is that I cover my face and walk out and they just see my hair and they think I'm Isla. That's so true. My dream. That's my dream. awesome. But you could have made that happen. I didn't because I thought it'd be crazy. Oh, it'd be so funny. I hate that. That's my impulse to be cool, to be like, no, no, no. Yeah. Your impulse should be to be uncool like the rest of us. Thank you. Scrambling when on the floor. When will I be free? <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got something else, Dan. I've got something else that that's <laughs> um, actually more of an it, um, convo. Yeah. Sorry, I'm like falling apart. I think my voice is sore. I'm like not on my A game, but like, look, I'm glad to be here. Um, <laughs> this just happened this morning. So yeah, I went for a run this morning. Okay, I stop know. right there. I know. I guess you're not okay. <laughs> no, what's I'm going not on? Okay. I got was up this before or after the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I got up and I was like, I'm gonna try running, and so I went for a run, and it was going really well, and then I. Mm. went to stretch because you're supposed to stretch after you run That's what you shouldn't say. just stop no. otherwise you might fall apart it how long f- did you run Oh, it was kind of like this app that's like you run and you walk and you run and you oh, walk and so it you builds you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um and so then I was doing my stretches and then I looked at my shoe under my shoe and what is there? Mm. Dog shit. shit. Absolute dog shit on my shoe. And then I'm like, "Oh, I re- I rubbed it on the grass, kept going with the stretching." Then I look at my hands because I'm like on the floor doing stretches. On the floor, like in the grass? Yeah. My hands are covered in dog shit. (laughs) (laughs) You've rolled in it. And I was just like, oh, (laughs) fuck this. Because do you know how like much effort it takes to like get yourself out to go for a run if you're someone like me? Yeah, it's so I was like, what about this? And what do I wear? And what about this? And And and, and, like your your brain is like thinking of all the things that can go wrong. And guess what it didn't think of? Shit on my feet and on my hands. So I had to just like be like, fuck this. I tried my fucking hardest. I tried to be the good girl and like do the stretching, but fuck this. I have to like now, What? luckily I was at a place where there was like bathrooms. So I had to walk like this with my hands. And guess Guess what? You think, oh wow, we're so lucky there's water and soap. Did it come off? It, it was it like immediately dried. It was like cement. I'm like scraping dried dog shit off my fucking hands. What's with this my dog nails. eating? Oh my god! But it's like it wasn't like a huge turd. It was just like smears kind. Anyways, Ew. this is amazing. So I've started the day with the dog feces on my hands, and then I washed them and whatever, and then went home. And then here's what I thought about. Yeah, I'm trying to take the dog shit off my shoe. And I just thought this, like, all you can do is, like, rub it on the grass Mm. and then it's still caked in it. I'm like, what do you do when you get, what do people do? Tell me this. What do people do when they get shit under your shoe? I'm like, do I just chuck them out? Like, it's, we're talking about feces here. Well, I, you could, like, get, like, a brush and do it in all the cracks oh. and stuff. Like, you got to get involved. But also my personal shit on a shoe story is actually also ongoing, is on my favorite Crocs. So I've got a few pairs. My yeah. green Crocs are a going out. She's got a going out Crocs. Croc. They're a going out Croc, my green Crocs. <laughs> and I have sh- and I got shit on them. And oh. I was so upset and cranky. And I came home and I was like, shoot on my shoe. And I put them on the balcony and then my beautiful boyfriend Alex said like baby just I will clean them for you just put them outside I'll clean them for you but then he forgot and so now they're just (gasps) on the balcony forever with like dried shit on them and then just the other day like I don't want to push him I don't want to be like babe can you clean the shit off my shoe because like he's not obliged to clean the shit Mm -hmm. off my shoe but I said like oh you said you're gonna do it and then you didn't um and he was like oh my god yeah I'm so sorry but he was like also doing his exams and stuff at the moment Mm. and so now he still just hasn't cleaned the shit off my shoe and I'm like well they're just there and we're kind of at like a standoff yeah, 
I would like, and he's gonna listen to this podcast, and he's gonna feel so bad, and he's gonna run outside and clean the shit <laughs> off my shoe, <laughs> which is kind of maybe why I'm bringing it up. Oh my god! But like, is it better if it's dry or wet, like well, for cleaning? That's what I was thinking because I was like, if he hadn't said that he would do it, I would have just cleaned them straight away because they were yeah. still wet. I just would have oh, like watered just them. Is insane. But now that it's dried, it's so dry. It's been so long. Maybe it would be easier to just kind of dust off. My I was wearing TNs like the. It's like mm. all in yeah, all gross. the crevices. Like I just, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm like, what? In my head, you just got to put them in the bin. Maybe like they're done. Ask your boyfriend to clean them for you. Oh, he's not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hose them? If you have like a high pressure hose, put them down. Like, mm, no, I don't have a gurney available in my apartment, <laughs> <laughs> so that's not gonna work. I just thought, like, I'd love to know, if listeners. Yeah. Please message in. Right in. Put in the curious cat. Like, literally, what do you do when you get shit on your shoes? And what if you were going to a nine to five job? Like, are you just bringing dog feces inside? No, no, it smells no, no, so no. bad. You don't. You would have to like. To me, it's like take the day outside. off. If that happens, take the day off. Yeah, I don't know. So that's another story. Let us know. I'd love to know as well, please. I've also got shit on a shoe. <laughs> so my both Are you have a man like ready them. to clean them. <laughs> Not yeah. The rest of us don't. I've got a man who's, yes. <laughs> He's probably doing it as we speak in the future, as I'm saying this in the recording. She's He's probably already gone yet. out there with his AirPods on listening to this. And as what's he, he doing? Them. What's his genius plan? I don't know. And I, it's not doesn't concern <laughs> me. And I don't need to know. And it concerns me, and I need to know because it's, it's going to happen to me again and again. It's not a woman's gonna... place to clean the shit off a shoe. <laughs> that's why I keep a man around the house, <laughs> and that's why your man ought to do the same. I guess I'll tell him. Oh my god! And then what else were you? Okay, so then we'll leave that. Yeah. Um. And oh. you're saying about a car. Oh yeah, yeah. Can Jenna I got just more. gives me little cryptic clues <laughs> of what she wants to talk about? Okay, this is interesting. So, <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> okay, so me and my boyfriend, we were going to do our weekly grocery shop, okay? And we've driven the car into the car park place where you go and then I'm like explaining where, car park. What is this? <laughs> Wait, so there's a place. <laughs> there's you a place you can park your car. The car. And then go in an elevator up and then, whoa, there's Aldi. And whoa. then around the corner there's car, all that kind of jazz. I normally just drive into Aldi. Yeah. What? It, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> like drive through. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, so that's what we did. You we parked, parked the car. We parked the car. Now you know you get the ticket when you go into the shopping mm-hmm. thing. Um, he took that and then left it on the seat. And then we were going to get out of the car, and I was like, Ben, don't leave the the ticket out in the open on the seat because someone will break in and they can get out of the shopping center. It's ridiculous. See. There we go. That is what he That's said. That's ridiculous. But let me tell you something. Why <laughs> do I think this? One, my mom has absolutely said that to me. She's I've always heard it before. told me, be like, hide the ticket. Don't show anyone. Like, otherwise, they'll absolutely break it. I see those signs that say, don't leave things. It's not a valuable. But it means that they just. And so Ben was like, he immediately was like, not furious, but like, he was just like, you're being crazy. What? He's like, Oh, because I just have to let easily break into a car. I love how, like, this is the line for him. This is the line for him. You're like, I have shit on my $250 shoes. I'm just going to throw them out. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And he's like, okay, baby. And then you're like, don't leave the ticket in the car. And he's like, what the fuck? (laughs) This is our first real fight. And so he was like... But he was thought it was incredulous that someone would break into a car. And I said, are yeah. you mental? Do you not believe that people are breaking into cars? I'm like, go tell a criminal. Like, yeah. criminals are breaking into cars. Does it? And he's like, it's too loud. Like, Well, he, he grew up in the, in the cold eastern, eastern suburbs. suburbs. He doesn't know what it's like out there 25 minutes away in Strathfield where you grew up. The yeah. mean streets. Yeah. Um, but it was like, and yeah. he just, we were just like, I was like, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm like, what do you mean? Of course someone could like break in and then they can just like get You'd out. You'd have to smash the wind. So yeah, it would be ridiculous to do it because like, if you leave like an iPad and a MacBook, oh. okay, that's like a three to $4,000 reward to break into the car. That's the risk. You're like, yeah, I'll smash a window for $3,000. Right. A lost ticket. At the shopping center is, I feel like the most I've ever seen that cost is like $70. No, but like you'd be getting a free car. 
Because you're breaking in. You don't and get the car, the car if you just have the ticket. You can't steal a car. Like, he doesn't have the key. That's what he also said. <laughs> he was like, and if they you don't want, have a key. If you wanted to steal the car as well, the ticket would not be like the like problem. Like, you'd have a stolen car, then you could just pay to get it. I don't know. Oh my God. The thing like protecting your car is not the gate. Oh. It's the car. Okay. <laughs> because what? I was like, <laughs> I mean, people are stealing cars and they're doing the thing with the wires, like in Fast and the Hot Furious. Wire. I don't think you can really do that with modern cars. Okay. Well, someone needs to tell my mum because she's worried about this all the time and it's now made me worried. That's interesting. And so that's that. But you've shut that down again. I've shut it down. And Great. in fact, I always keep the ticket in the car because I will always lose the ticket if I take it with me. And also my life hack of the whole century mm. is that always says like pay at the pay station before you leave. You never have to pay at the pay station before you Why? leave. You can always pay at the gate. You can always pay at the no gate way. with a credit card. No Always. Way. Why do they do that? I'll bet so my that... life on it. It's because it's faster for people to get out. They don't yeah. want you to like fuck around with your yeah. card at the gate. But They're it's like, like, oh, it's rejected. I have no money. I got to yeah. transfer. That's like at the wow. entertainment quarter. They always say you have to pay at the station. Never do. Always pay at the gate. That's a great life tip. That is and my life tip is tip. don't you let your car get stolen yeah. by leaving that precious little ticket. Yeah, my other life tip is to like walk around the car park and if anyone has their ticket visible, you can steal that car and you can just <laughs> drive it right out. Because if you've got the ticket, then that's proof that it's your car and that will hold up in no, court. that's not what I meant. If you, have the stole, if you have the ticket and you've stolen the car, you draw less attention by like you'd have to drive through the barricade and then everyone would know but if you have a ticket you just go look this is my car yeah, and no yeah. one would know that it's stolen the smashed window and the glass everywhere <laughs> would be like well no i've got the ticket <laughs> so no fuss here <laughs> i've got actually i've got a bit of gossip which is like old school gossip right. because and it's also about a criminal mind Great. so this is relevant um and that's a fantastic segue um, cause I'm listening to this podcast series at the moment, which is all about the, um, OJ Simpson case mm-hmm. and trial, which is like, I guess if you don't know what I'm talking about, like <laughs> wake That's up, mental. <laughs> That's mental. wake up, it's the trial of the century. And yes, it was in 1994. <laughs> Around we, when we were I've listened born. to like 12 hours of podcasts about it and the Netflix series like three oh times. God. Do I know what year it was? No. <laughs> No, but honey. She knows the emotions and the feelings. I know the vibes, <laughs> and I know the yeah. Anyway. Sorry, did you say you've watched the Netflix series three times? Yeah, at least three. Why? Times. I think because like I watched it once, and then I went to America with my friend Shannon, and you know when you're like traveling and you just like want to watch stuff because yeah. you're tired, and then we watched it together then, and then just recently because I was listening to the podcast, I was like, oh, I'll put that on. Have you seen the one about Gianni Versace? I started that. I watched most of it and it was kind of boring. So for anyone listening at home who isn't um, Italian, that's Gianni Versace. <laughs> Just so Yeah, you... I said it the proper way. Yeah. Gianni ha- Versace. <laughs> Gianni Versace. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's uh, that series that's yeah, like the remake. Yeah, and it's got the guy stuff. from Glee in it. Yeah. Oh my God, it's great. See, that's so funny because I was watching the OJ one and I dropped off, but I went on the Gianni Versace one. Interesting. And you flipped it. I flipped it. I flip the scripts. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, OJ Simpson. Yeah. So everyone knows the juice. Um, but did you know that I just learned to listen to this podcast that on the night that he um, committed the murders, allegedly, I suppose, mm. um, earlier that night he had uh, McDonald's was what he had for dinner before he killed his ex-wife. Oh, my God. Because so it is the meal of the people. It is. And then did you I know? I love McDonald's. I know Sorry. you love McDonald's. <laughs> we can just segue <laughs> from these horrific murders into yeah, McDonald's. Yeah. This okay. really is the intersection of a lot of your kind of passions and interests, <laughs> which is domestic violence and yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Okay, That's... I'm not interested. In it. It's happened to me. And so it is no, something that I... You're an advocate I... against. <laughs> But my you're an interest. advocate for, so it's kind of an interesting <laughs> Yeah, clash. if there's a way one day in my career that I can be an advocate for domestic violence services and McDonald's, and if McDonald's? I could, inter- like I'm doing that at a McDonald's, there's like <laughs> there's like resources in Happy Meals that I'm like yeah, giving yeah, to yeah. people. That's perfect. That would be the dream. And then also I was just Googling because I was trying to find out exactly what he had at oh McDonald's. my god that is so cool um and i've got like a close estimation but not the exact order unfortunately mm. um but then i also found out so like a few years ago when oj went to jail for something else and then he mm. got out of jail the first meal he yeah. had when he got out of jail in 2017 was mcdonald's oh my god 
Is that oh crazy? Oh my God, that's amazing. Interesting. Do you know what your me- is the last meal you want to have before you die? I think about this all the time and I don't know. I don't McDonald's. know. It's probably like a big lasagna or something. Wow, or... Italian. Mm. Mm. Did you just say Italian? No. <laughs> Italian. <laughs> no, I would never say that. <laughs> that's so special. Yeah, isn't that special? I love McDonald's. I could talk about it for so long. You know what I want to watch again? What? Um, the one where it's like about the guy who eats a million burgers from McDonald's and gets sick. Super size me. Does that make you hungry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really I love McDonald's The Founder another great movie oh I haven't watched it but oh my god you've got to it'll be in your top five faves are you do you just like it because it makes you think about McDonald's yeah, or is it actually <laughs> a good movie <laughs> I want more are like, movies to be spawned oh, from McDonald's you'll love this movie there's burgers <laughs> there's chips they get into the ice creams the sundaes um, it's pre McFlurry but I can just definitely see Mm-mm. the origins. Mm-mm. Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how how long have we been going for? Uh, Thirty on the dot. Oh my god, that's great. that is just my internal clock. How did you know that? It's on the dot. Did you know it was thirty? No. Okay, then why are you? Because I was just I was just like we've been in this. Well, like, maybe today can be a shorter one. Just my voice is like not. Yeah, okay. we've still got stuff to talk about anyway. Right. Um, can I also just say one more thing about McDonald's? Yeah. Is that time? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's is like, no wonder it's like the best and amazing because yeah. if you're on a highway, there's only one spot for you to go. Well, I mean, now that there, there's, um, Oliver's healthy fast food. You I don't know what that is. Beans. And I'm angry. I don't no. want it coming into the market. You know, Oliver's. No. They've got beans instead of chips. <laughs> And people love them. And people are you, love I've them. I've literally never seen one. There's one at Twin Servos at on the M1. Is it like a restaurant? There's one in like every country town. I don't know. You don't know. You're blinded. I'm blind. By those I'm golden arches. arches. <laughs> <laughs> I always think, I've been thinking recently, because it's like, you know, when you're driving for a long time mm. and you get, there's like a drive through McDonald's and then you like get it, obviously. And then I finish my meal and I'm still driving and you see another McDonald's. I'm like, I could just go through oh. again and they wouldn't even know. Oh my God. They wouldn't yes. know. No. But I'm like, they should know. They should like take your number plate. <laughs> and you shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> there should be a register. Oh my God. I'd be banned from the whole company yeah. if they were checking how often I'm having it. They should check your ID like buying cold and flu tablets at the pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, Miss Caristo, you actually just went through another drive through 45 minutes ago. <laughs> um, oh my God. Also, so guess what? So I was away this weekend and I was close to this place called Gundagai. And yeah. did you know... And I learned this from that show that I did, we had it together with Ben Lee and Ioni Sky, mm-hmm. that Gundagai McDonald's has the worst reviews ever. It's meant to be like the worst McDonald's in Australia. What? And you can read hundreds of reviews from people being like, don't go back here. No, this was the worst burger. The chips were uh, like, I'm serious. Like, what are they it. doing? There's like a standard. And I kind really of... wanted to go to Gundagai Macca's. Like, I'm sure so it would be bad. fine. I'm sure you'd like eat it up and be like, yum, yum, yum. How dare you? I actually have a standard when it comes to McDonald's, which is why you should never get um, takeaway McDonald's. Not takeaway, delivered. Because like McDonald's has like a 10 minute window for being just like glorious. Yeah, yeah. And then never. it drops off and it's horrible. And I never don't get it delivered. understand why people do that. I'm reading the um, reviews now. Apparently there is an insect infestation. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. The see? food was somehow bland and really gross at mm-hmm. the same time. Diet Coke was like water. Bad which service, they that say. That means I need to change the syrups, by the way. I know. I used to work at McDonald's. Oh, my God. I keep forgetting that. I've done my no time. No wonder we're friends. Jesus. I've been in the service <laughs> industry. <laughs> <laughs> um if I, this person says, if I had a time machine, the first thing I would do is stop myself <laughs> from going there. <laughs> That's an awesome life yeah. that this guy Paul has led, <laughs> to be honest, because he's like, regrets in my life. This one meal at Gundagai McDonald's. Can you imagine it's the movie um, Back to the Future and he like gets the car and he's like, we need to go back in time. I cannot go to the McDonald's in Gundagai. What happened? Did his wife leave him there or something? Was that I the final it, straw? No, it would be that the McDonald's was bland. It was bland. And cold. And the girl didn't serve him with a smile. And the It'd Diet like Coke that. was like soda water. He had to drink something that tasted like soda water. And he was like, I'm going back. <laughs> 
Okay, one more thing about McDonald's. God, I could really talk about this forever. <laughs> is that I've never had a cheeseburger. Never in my life. Why don't you just have one? Yeah, I should. Why? What do you mean? Uh, but I just like, because when I was a kid, I was like one of those kids that like, didn't want to eat anything yeah. that wasn't pasta. I remember those like, nugget elite. kids. Yeah, I was a nugget kid. And I've been a nugget kid for 26 years. Yeah, they were always and I've freaks. Only, I've only br- 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 branched out into McChicken's. And the Angus, the bacon Angus, yum, yum, yum. If you're having an Angus, then you should have a cheeseburger. I feel like you've taken five mm. steps. And a McChicken. No, a Mc... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. A chicken and cheese. A chicken yeah. and cheese. Someone told me it's like a hack where it's like Did $2 you dollar burger. like that? Loved it. I think so you should just... So do you think just... I'd love a cheeseburger? Yeah. Let's go after this slot. What are you doing? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I think I'm available. I shouldn't eat McDonald's. Stop it. Leave me alone. La, 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 it's still la, la, too la. early for me to eat McDonald's. What again. Do you mean? If it's, it's like two forty six, yeah, but it's like my in terms of like my like psychology, like what I was saying before, two forty six. <laughs> At this point of the day, I'm still like oh, it's still that good. I could Five p.m. After think that, that I could make it through. <laughs> I think I had some toast, but I think that might be the last thing I ever eat. Ten p.m. I'm at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like a. I like had too much McDonald's recently because like I kept doing these like late gigs. And then it's always like a treat if you have a bad gig. Mm -hmm. I say this like it's the law. (laughs) (laughs) But everyone knows in the industry that if you have a rough gig, then you're allowed to get McDonald's on the way home. The McFlurry. And um, I did that a few times, but now I have this like Pavlovian response, like getting in my car after a gig. I'm like, I'm allowed McDonald's. And I'm like, no, I'm actually not. <laughs> yeah. I actually can't have McDonald's after every gig because it's like, the fact is. You're gigging every night. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. That's not actually, it's not like a treat. <laughs> that's crazy. I'm like the exact same. <laughs> and that's what I said with the ice cream. It's like, whether it's a good gig, I deserve a treat. If it's a bad gig, I deserve, I a, deserve treat. a treat. Like, it's just treats, treats, treats. And here's the fact that some people aren't even having dessert dessert ever in their life it's, it's like not on their insane. radar i i can't not have dessert yeah i have dessert after every meal mm. breakfast I, lunch and dinner but there's the, different the desserts. desserts kind of get different like ratings so like my lunch dessert today was just like a fun size milky way cute which is basically like healthy yeah you're yeah. nodding your head <laughs> we've got a producer in the room he's nodding his head okay he's like yeah yeah fun size milky way that's actually 56 calories so oh uh, and you know that about curly whirly yeah curly whirly that's around 85 calories Shit. You just, tell me you know this stuff i'm the um a beautiful mind of eating disorders I'm, yeah <laughs> i'm eating a sleeve of oreos 100 000 calories <laughs> send me a photo of your bowl i'll calculate it in my head <laughs> i'll divide it up um we have right, do we have any gossip submissions we do today? we've got um it's kind of a weird one because we're recording like this episode before we've released the previous one even so Mm -hmm. i assume after this next one gets released we'll be flooded with submissions yeah um so you guys know that you can always send us anonymous gossip on curiouscat.com forward slash big natural talents i think that's it it's in the description or whatever if you need um or just dm us but this person has sent me one it's quite complex Mm -hmm. okay so i need to like i've written it down in a timeline so and I'll try to do a bit of a reveal. So this is someone who's written, her sister moved overseas with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's living overseas and her boyfriend. She gets a job at a bar. Okay. And so she's like overseas working at a bar. And then she's just like telling her sister back home about this crazy guy who works at the bar. So this is the gossip about this guy that works at the bar. Um, he like started dating the bar manager and then he ended up moving in with the bar manager. I think it's like... He seems kind of like a scumbag guy. So it's probably like because they were dating, but also because he was like, oh, I need somewhere to live. So he's living with the bar manager who's in her 40s and also the bar manager's daughter who is in her 20s. And this guy who is dating the woman in her 40s, he also starts fucking the daughter. So he's like living with a mother and daughter and like fucking them both. No, 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 no. So this girl is like hearing this from her sister and she's like whoa that's the most fucked up guy in the world that's a crazy story and then her sister says oh and by the way i'm also cheating on my boyfriend with this guy oh my god crazy right so anyway fast forward this she's like <laughs> cheated with this guy and then they I'm like end- who is this guy Pepe Le Pew? Like, who <laughs> could be this Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> who could be this yeah. smooth and swallow. Isn't it crazy? These guys are never actually that smooth, though. He's no. probably just the worst. Oh my god. But anyway, so now then they start like dating quite seriously. I'm pretty sure like she breaks up with the boyfriend that she was cheating <gasps> on. Thank God. This poor innocent soul. Um 
And then, um, so she's like dating this guy, she's living overseas. And then it like comes up time to do the paperwork for her visa. And she's like such a dumb bitch. She like doesn't know how to do it. And so she just married this guy for a visa. So wait. now she's married to the guy who was fucking the mother and daughter. Okay, wait a minute. Who, who, okay, so this person who's a psycho. Yeah. Does this make sense? I've tried to like no, map but like, it out. Who's submitted, is this the person who's submitting is the person who's the psycho? No, 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 the sister. The sis, so the. So she's like, my sister has done this. My sister is a psycho. shit. My sister is the psycho yeah. who's um, married the man. Yeah, she's married Pepe Le Pew. Oh my God. So now they're married for the visa. But obviously it looked <gasps> sus as hell and she got like investigated for no, fraud. No. Nearly got deported. No. Um, but I think it's all fine now. And I think they did they came back to Australia, so now he's back in Australia with her. Um no. because of COVID, I guess. So they're still together. Yeah. This no, is, they're just married. They they're our next guests for the pod. I need yeah. to like <laughs> investigate them. This is a call out. <laughs> I need to ask them all about their life decisions. Yeah. It, oh my god. A mum and a daughter. I know, right? Do they know? I've about they each surely other? found out. But isn't that just like kind of gross? Oh, of as course, well? it's gross. It's gross. It's so gross. Like it's different that like me and my mum both find Daniel Craig attractive. But would That's it be different. chill if me and mum were both fucking Daniel Craig? No, mm. I'd be jealous. I'd be angry. I and feel I'd be like, like if it was like Daniel Craig specifically, I think like that's okay because he's famous. What? But if it was just like a guy. I guess. If your mum fucked Daniel Craig and, and then, then Daniel- later down the track I did. You did? How would <laughs> <laughs> This could happen. Um, I, st- I think I would still feel weird, but yeah, we'd probably weird. like high five. Yeah. And we'd be like, go girl. It'd you go like girl. bonding, I guess. Yeah. Bondage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, but like if it was ongoing and you're living in the same house together, no, Daniel yeah, Craig, no, you're no, a scumbag. No. Daniel Craig, move out. Daniel Craig. <laughs> Craig. One of us is marrying Daniel Craig. Get your own house, <laughs> I guess. That's crazy, this gossip. That is what gossip yeah. is all about. And that's gossip what is just people yes. making crazy life decisions and other people hearing about it and talking about it and submitting it on a curious cab. Absolutely. So that's if you have any similar family scandal or if your sister is a stupid oh my God. girl making foolish decisions, let us know about it. And we'd love yeah, to we talk about know. it. I don't know. Her sister, I don't want to call a woman stupid, I guess. But this is pretty and silly. And I do. <laughs> it's pretty silly, guys. And I hope she's okay. Um, oh, my God. I wonder, like, I hope she replies, the girl who submitted this. But, like, like, what kind of sister were you like to her? Were you enabling her? Were you like, I think you shouldn't be doing this? Like, I think she was from what? Because I was, like, talking to her. Mm. And she was saying, like, my sister is always doing this shit. So I'm always like, yeah, you gotta oh, let what him go. next? You what gotta let him go. So I don't yeah. think she's really enabling. She's kind of she's like. She's just like, you just have to watch. Because you love them. And I know this. Yeah. I have a sister. Um, You have to watch them, like, do their thing and, like, give them the advice. But then, like, they have to ultimately make their own decisions. They have to find their own path in life yeah okay great stuff great stuff guys i called my friend before we recorded this and i was like do you have any gossip in your life like that happened any time in your life or anything you've ever heard about celebrity and she was like nah i got nothing and like has like, anything I mean- ever happened in the world in your life <laughs> yeah and she was so unhelpful kate coates love you so much and then her boyfriend <laughs> chimed in and was like i know something and i'm blanking on the actress, maybe <laughs> Carrie Mulligan, but he was like, Carrie Mulligan is starring in a um, new film about the, who's the head of the Me Too thing, the like directory guy? Weinstein, a movie about Weinstein. Oh, really? There's yeah. a movie about Weinstein. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. All I know is actually about the Me Too movement. I mean, I know a lot because of it was a big news item. Yeah. But actually, if you Google uh, my name, Lauren Bonner. The other Lauren Bonner that comes up is um, <laughs> Lauren Bonner, who's also a redhead and is apparently the face of the Me Too movement on Wall Street. What? So, yeah. She's like a finance queen no. who is like it- called some shit out. So I'm like, okay, stop living my dreams. Is this the different one to like when we looked up Lauren Bonner on Instagram? And it's like a girl who posts sexy news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's also another Lauren Bonner who's <laughs> Lauren Bonner official on Instagram and she is a model in new york city and she has a really hot body and she posts a lot of nude photos so um i don't know take of that what you will (laughs) but also if you look up lauren bonner on reddit then it's a lot of photos of her and it's like lauren bonner nude and you look at it and um that's that's actually my body so um (laughs) it is my body that she's using and that's what i look like that's awesome so 
Interesting. And, what, and there's the only other Conchetta Caristo in the world is this old lady in Italy who has at Conchetta Caristo on Instagram as her handle. And she won't give it up. And she won't give it to you. <laughs> and it's a disaster. And it's ruining my life it's and my career. <laughs> we talked about it on the first episode, didn't we? Yeah, and we'll be talking about it every episode until it changes. This poor old <laughs> Italian woman that you're harassing. This poor old Italian woman. I hope you rot in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my okay, god. You've got something here. I do. I brought a prop. segment. I found um a segment that we call Street Library, which I think we've only ever done once, once. before. <laughs> but I like to look at the Street Library, um, which is just like a box Love of books Street Library. in the park. Oh my god, I have a great book to bring for Street Library. It's about like how to survive depression. I'll bring that in. Please bring it in. It's but, a picture book. <laughs> hey babe, read it first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found this and I thought it was pretty funny. It's a book called um, Fuck You 2016. Oh, my God. And it says, a look back on the worst year ever. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Is it a published book? Yeah. Imagine being the person who wrote this, Michael Joseph. You're like, you stupid idiot. You didn't even know 2019, 2020 happened. Yeah. No, it's Bob A.N. Gry Pants, which is like a psycho name. (laughs) Gry Pants. But it's like, on the back, it's like, Bowie, Brexit. Hiddle Swift, Trump, 2016. Was it really the worst year ever? So it's like, imagine that. Imagine writing this and then like 2020 happens. You'd yeah. feel so He's stupid. probably got another book called Fuck You 2020. <laughs> yeah, he better actually. Yeah, it's he- like he's got an updated version. I just think it's so funny when you think about Street Library. These are the books that people are letting go of. And I think that there's something to be said about this book someone it's really passing it on just so innocent oh my god i should have read it properly before i brought it in but i've literally just flicked to a page where he's dragging um jk rowling <laughs> who we now know like should very rightfully be dragged for being transphobic <gasps> and an asshole but he's like jk rowling because she sent an ebook to a syrian girl and not a real physical book what so it's like so funny to be like cancel jk rowling for that but it's like oh my god fast forward to 2021 his fuck you 2020 book is like this big it's a novel (laughs) it is like that's i kind of really like the design though yeah it's actually like quite beautiful but isn't that funny anyway can i touch it someone put it in the street library because they were like get this out of my house get this out of my house i cannot (laughs) (laughs) the context did we do something naughty in 2015 Will 2017 be less shit? Maybe we should no. like sell our street library books or something or f- auction oh them God, off. Oh, that's or... so cool. And we can like sign them. Yeah. Maybe leave a nude in, one of Lauren Bonner's nudes. One of my nudes. No, Lauren Bonner official, not me, of course. <laughs> I'll um, sign her nudes. Happily. And you've got fan mail. And I have up. fan mail. And I feel like when we write fan mail, picture it written like M-A-L-E because it's always dude. <laughs> yeah, um, this one is really interesting. And I've already shown you this but there's been a new development that i think is really funny so oh, this yeah random guy Start from the beginning messaged me on instagram and he wrote this wow dot i mean full stop you're perfect full stop i'd bank transfer one thousand dollars up front if you wanted i mean is that not your dream message to receive it do is. i wish my boyfriend sent me that every day yes yeah. is it not him yes it's a different guy and, and i said anyone who's messaging us as well take a note <laughs> yeah, that's how you open. <laughs> that's how you message me. Um, so I said, prove it, X O X O X O X O X O, and then he said, okay, can I see you naked in return? No, he said up front. Oh, he said up front. He said up front. What's going on that's here, so, that's, sir? That's what's infuriating about this is yeah. because you will. You get people being like, please, can I just send you money? I'm obsessed with you, and I'm like, yeah, of course. Of course. What you? I'm gonna say no. And then they like, we'll just not. Do you mind posting a photo of you naked on a trapeze? And it's like, no, no, that's not what you said. Um, So I said, no, XOXO. Then he jumps to $2,000, question mark. Then he says $1,000 each tit. And and then he had me. I'm like, okay, two for one, sure. Yeah, um, but he's got to pay you up front because he's not actually going to give you the money. He's gonna. This is a man that will never. You'll never see a. You'll cent never see a dime. Him. And also, if you want to see Conchetta's tits, just go to any beach in Sydney on any day in don't summer. Don't give it away. I could be getting money for this. A thousand dollars a tit. Well, I don't want these guys there. to see it for free. <laughs> um, then he wrote G string and topless. This son of a bitch. I said no, hun. XOXO, still polite and gorgeous and charming. Then he said. $5,000. Obviously, I don't reply. I'm like, you're wasting my time. Then he replies to a story of mine because I did my makeup and I yeah. put it up and it looks cute. And he wrote, wow. And then he <laughs> then he switches into, 
what you doing? Now he's like, let's hang out. What are you up to? He's like, we, well, you build a rapport at this point. <laughs> yeah. And then this is so funny because these guys like change tact every second. You've got to keep up. Yeah. Now he's like. He's a businessman. He's like, can I send a video? Whoa. Which I know what that means. I once fell for that trick. <laughs> <laughs> it's not them like waving. No, it's, no, no. It's, a, it's their penis in a cage. It's their penis in a cage, locked in a cage with a key. And it's like not rewarding for anyone and it's horrible and it's on my phone. So oh my God. I said no. Then he said, and this is where it really gets me because I'm a sweetheart, but he said, I'm in love with you. Come on. Of course no, he is. No, he's not. If he's in love with you, then he of should send you $1,000 up front. <laughs> okay. He's not been up front by definition. Then the next thing he sends is like really getting to, you know, what I'm all about. He said, would you marry me? And what do I do with this? I show my boyfriend and I said, look, you better get on your knee quick <laughs> because people, I'm hot. I'm a hot commodity. And I said, pay me. My PayPal is Good. Conchetta Worldwide. Yeah. And then he says, okay, for what? And I said, for nothing, for literally nothing, because that's what you said in the beginning. That's what he said. And then he says, "Now he's gaslighting you." He's gaslighting me. Then he says, "Oh, nothing at all," and I said, "Yep," or I'm blocking you. Look at me be a um, self-assured diva. Finally, she's being a girl boss. I'm being a girl boss. <laughs> finally, this is not being a girl. I've boss always is. been a girl employee, a girl intern, never a girl boss. But today I am. Then he says, "Can I have your number again?" No. Then he says, "I can't use PayPal. I need BSB an account." And I just said, I don't believe you. Then he said, I'm in minus like $300 with PayPal for something I didn't buy. I can bank transfer. So then I'm like, I still don't believe you. But this is where it's ended up. Does he have Beam it? Oh, yeah, I'll ask. I'm sure he doesn't. And he'll have some other excuse. It's like, get Beam it. Get Beam it. It's so easy. If I'm so perfect, you can download an app. <laughs> you know right? you can go to the extent of downloading an app which is quite a convenient app to have it's really good for your friends anyways this is where it's ended up and this is the yeah, line where are to we quote. now this and we'll update you next week <laughs> i am italian too and i'm pretty much in love with you being italian it's all it takes sometimes sometimes and that <laughs> is where we leave it very <laughs> <Mic drop>. interesting <laughs> that's such italian guy behavior to be like bella i want to give a thousand dollars and then no follow through absolutely not we're all talk me all including talk. including <laughs> oh my god well i think that's it for today i've got this sore voice i gotta rest up Absolutely. you know you gotta i gotta stop up. telling men no i can't marry you so i have to put it on rest um if you have any gossip or if you don't have any gossip just ask around please get something let yeah. us know it's a fun conversation ask your uber driver next time you're in a freaking uber uber drivers love to give you gossip if it'll you're be a haircut about their divorce it'll be <laughs> about their business and you know it'll be a good shout out for them so. yeah for sure so send us that in then yeah the curious cat will be in the episode description or you can also just dm us um, um oh and thank you for your amazing reviews <gasps> etc and your dms for all the support Yay. please keep reviewing it if you want to like share it and post about it like absolutely go off like all of this helps yes. us um just please. get a little big natural talents out there a little tiny big natural, natural talents, talents. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah thank you so much please subscribe review tell your friends send us gossip that's about it. And go live your life. Okay, bye. Bye.